G'day and welcome back to day two of the build of our Pulnudlium and Corflutium model aircraft. And if you hear some noise in the background, it's rain. Yeah, I tell you, it's summer. The rain is warmer here, but rain will not stop us from finishing this plane today and test flying it because pool noodles love rain and cool flute doesn't care. So even if it's bucketing down, we're going to give this a throw, we're going to give it a toss, going to see if it flies, see if we can make it work. And since the last video, I've done a couple of things. I've wired up the ESC. Now this ESC, it looks huge, doesn't it? It's only a 20 amp ESC though. This plane has been built from all my bits and pieces laying around, my offcuts, my rejects, the stuff that I found in the junk box. So I could have used a nice new small ESC, but I had this lying around. And the beauty of these bigger older ESCs is they have good becks in them. Now, you could use a mini quad ESC, but most mini quad ESCs do not have becks in them. So you'd have to have a separate beck, a separate voltage regulator to drop the LiPo voltage down low enough to run your servos and your radio control receiver. So the beauty of this thing is it's got a lovely 5 volt beck in it. So even though it's big and bulky and whatever, I don't give a damn. Now I've put a JST connector on this end, and here's the wire that goes off to the receiver. Also in the junk bin, I found a D4R2 receiver without a case on it. I don't know if it, it actually binds. I'll have to do a range test. It may be faulty. I don't know. We'll find out. Um, all these things just serve to make the flying more exciting. So I will range test it, but it's a D4R2, so I'm going to have to use my good old Turnigy 9X to fly this thing because the new, uh, these don't bind to the Tyrannus unless you put a module in because it's the old protocol. It's not the version 2, it's just the original one. So I've bound it up and it seems okay, but as I say, I'll do a range test. So we've got another servo here. I'll find an arm for it, hopefully. And that'll be my rudder servo, which will go up the back like so. And you see, I've put the horn on here, a little bit of hot glue, cut a slot, put hot glue on the bottom to hold it in, just a plywood horn. It all seems to work very well. This is just a piece of wire. I just found this piece of wire laying around. And it's, it is kind of soft wire, but there's not a lot of stress on here. And also, because I've put my elevator horn on the top, as you'll see, the wire's under tension. It's going to be pulling. So if you'd put the horn on the bottom, then to give up elevator, the wire would have to push, and it could bow. And of course, up elevator is the one you really want, because if you're in a big dive and you want to pull out, and you give up elevator, and the wire bows, well, you just go straight to the ground, make a big mess. Having the wire under tension with up elevator means that you're always going to have up when you need it. Down, it could be a bit iffy, but we don't care about down unless we're flying inverted. We're not there yet, so I put the horn on the top, and also it means it's less likely to get caught in the grass, you know. That's another factor. These are the little tips I'm giving you while we build this thing. Right, um, so I've got to find a place for my ESC. We're just going to bodge this on the outside. We're not going to make it look pretty at this stage until we know that it flies, so I'll probably just... Whisk, whack this around here. I may even just use a rubber band to hold this on. It'll be fine. And I'll use a rubber band, rubber band to hold the battery on as well because I'm just going to dig a little divot out, put the battery on the top so it's not going to get bunged up on the ground when we have those inevitable landings. So the battery will probably go there and the, dig a little hole out, stick it in. Um, hey, and then all I've got to do now, of course, is make another horn and some wire for the rudder. And I, and I think we're actually ready to give it a toss, give it a throw. Oh, and I'll find a propeller and a nut for the motor and we'll be good to go. Right, I'm going to do a little test now because I've temporarily wired the motor to the ESC. You can see the three wires there. And Murphy's Law says that you will always get it wrong the first time. So the motor will probably run the wrong way. And this is also the opportunity to check out that our, uh, our wiring is all good. So I've got a battery here. It's just a piece of rubbish old battery. Probably doesn't even have much power in it. I'm going to plug it in, making sure these wires don't short because I've just pushed the heat shrink over. I haven't shrunk it down. So if I need to change it, I can. So let's plug this in here and... Ooh, we got some beeps. That's good. Let's see if the motor goes the right way. Oh, brill! We have beaten Murphy's Law. The motor goes the way I want it to. Excellent. So now I'll heat shrink these up and we can carry on. And here's a little tip if you're making your own plywood uh, horns for the uh, control surfaces. You need to drill a hole there that this wire you're using will go through. So just get a bit of wire, cut it off, stick it in your drill, your cordless drill, and then use that to drill the hole. And if you cut it with side cutters, it'll have kind of a flat spade edge on it. So there you go, a hole. And you think it's perfect size for the wire you're using. Now another tip for young players, when you've got your horn here and you've cut a slot in the rudder or the elevator to get it through, in a perfect world, the little hole you've drilled will be right in the middle of the hinge line there, which means you get an equal throw either way. So what you can see here is I've actually sort of slanted this back a bit so the hole is brought back from the edge because the horn only goes up to the edge of the core flute and we've got this gap. So I've moved the hole back 
And if you haven't got it quite right, you can always just tilt it in that little slot there to move it back further. So then the hole will sit right over the horn, line, the hinge line, and you'll get an equal amount of movement. That applies to all models, not just these little foamies, every model. That little point where the linkage connects should be right in the middle of your hinge line. And the tips just keep on coming today because look, I've just put some hot glue on here and as you can see, it's, um, it's not going off very well because it's a really, really hot day here. And it'd be nice if we had some kicker for hot glue, wouldn't it? Like you do with CAA, just, CAA, just spray it on and it goes hard immediately. Well, there is kicker for hot glue. It's this. This is the sort of dust, the stuff you get from your local electronics store for blowing the dust out of your uh, keyboards and things. If you tip it upside down, it releases a really, really cold spray. So you just give this a bit of a blast. And that freezes the hot glue instantly. So now, ooh, look at that. It's not sticky anymore. And uh, so on a hot day, if you're trying to use hot glue, especially if you're out in the field or something and you've got a portable hot glue gun and it's just too hot in summer, get a can of this. Your hot glue will freeze instantly. Brilliant stuff. Time to make the linkage for the rudder. You can see I've got my rudder horn and things on there, and I've got my rudder servo here, which will, I'll be putting against the, gluing it into here. Oh, can't. I'm one-handed here. Hang on. I'm going to use my other hand. I'm going to glue that servo against the rudder there, and then I'm just going to make a piece of wire that goes between there and there. Okay, so there we go. We've got the elevator and the rudder working. Yay! So, whoa, and even the motor goes. Look at the torque on that baby! Woohoo! Here we go. So, uh, I've just got to paste a few bits in places, make a hole for the battery, put a propeller on it, and oh, of course plug the wings back in, because the wings plug and unplug, it's really convenient. Now, one thing I've noticed is that it's a little bit, I think the rigging's wrong, I've got a bit of, it's ended up with a bit of negative on the wing, so yeah, I'm going to have to put a lot of up trim in, or I may just, because it's, um, because it's a bull noodle, just push this down here, which will pull the tail up. See that? It'll put, put a bit of angle on the tail. Hopefully that will fix the problem. We'll find out. It's going to be damn interesting, this test flight. Radio. I shall carry on. Now you can see what I've done here, can't you? See, I've put a bit of an up curve in the, uh, in the fuselage. Hopefully you can see that. It's now curved up, which gives the wing some angle of attack. I just did it by pushing this down further and gluing it. So we'll have to use the fact that the pull noodles are bendy to provide a change in rigging. Ah, oh, this is such a fantastic material to work with. Uh, I'm really, really happy now. So, batteries and wings. Radio, batteries charged. There's only a couple of things to do now. I just want to make sure the wings aren't going to fall off in flight. Um, probably wouldn't affect the flight characteristics too much, but it's really not a good look. And I need to mount my receiver somewhere. So I'm just going to run a zip tie right around this here. Uh, poke a hole in. Oh, what do I use to poke the hole? Use this knife here. This knife's a bit smaller. I'm going to poke a hole in here. And one matching on the other side roughly. Roughly about there, let's go in here, and probably about there, hopefully those are big enough, and I'll put one in here too, just to hold this here. Right, so hopefully I can run a zip tie right around there. I'll start from the bottom and work my way around. This should just be the safety mechanism that stops the wings flying off in, in flight. If I can get up through the hole, it's quite a tight fit. Here we go. Probably can't see anything, can you? Because I'm probably miles out of shot. Because I can't see the LCD on the camera while I'm doing this, so makes it harder. Come on, get, get in that hole. A dollar for every time I said that. Be a rich man. Woo, here we go. And through this hole. Come on. Here we go. So as you can see, this zip tie is hopefully, oh that's gone inside the <laughs> core flute, hold on, out of frame so I can see what I'm doing, sorry about that, here we go, this zip tie comes right around like that, and does up underneath, hopefully, there we go, there's our wing and receiver retainer, look at that, it's like a bought one, isn't that fantastic, brilliant, and I've done the careful just scrunching of cables here to make sure these are out of the way, um, balance point is Still pretty good. So I think we're pretty much ready to fly now. Um, have to get the hat cam charged because my observer is just no good with the camera. No use asking. No point in asking the observer to film because all you get is sky and ground. Plug this in. We'll see how much power I put a prop on. Let's see how much power we get out of this baby with the setup. Make a noise. There we go. Okay, here we go. Bit of revs. Ooh, that's good. It's got lots of herbs, that's brilliant. Ooh, better go and do a range test, then we'll do our test flight. Of course, in order to do 
the range test, we need to make sure the fail safe is set. So, got the motor on, I'm going to turn the transmitter off now. Woohoo, that works. Brilliant. So, that's all good. Fail safe works. Safe to fly. Let's range test it. Okay, to be doubly safe, I put another zip tie on to hold the wings in. So, there's our zip ties holding the wings to the bull noodle. And uh, range test passed okay. So, what I've got to do is now wait for the hat cam to charge. And there's some airplanes flying around at the moment. They always come when you want to do something. So we'll wait for them to disappear. And then we'll go out there and give it a biff. Woo! Okay, here we are. The wind's picked up. The rain has cleared a little bit. The planes that were here for two hours have gone. So finally, finally we get to fly this damn thing. Got my radio, got my observer. Let's put the hat cam on. Hopefully I'll get it at the right angle. You will find out. Well, no, I'll find out. And I feed it up the video, so... He's hoping everything works to plan. All right, let's plug stuff in. Waiting, waiting. Woohoo, that's got to be good. These wires should blow back. <laughs> I hope they don't get caught in the propeller. I guess we're not long enough to go back to there, so never mind. Things we can change in version two. Got the elevator, got lots of elevator throw. Not much expo either, I'm afraid. Um, lots of rudder throw. Could be a bit touchy on the old elevator. I see we've got a bit of, a bit of down trim there because it's got a bit of, of reflexed up a bit. And we have put the tail up so, and the rudder has got a little bit of right, so I might just take that out with a bit of left trim. There we go. So hopefully now it's going to fly fairly straight. We don't know. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, people. Could be short, could be fun. Yes, it's very sensitive. Needs a bit of down trim. But it's flying, look. Look, it's flying. Look at this, I need some down trim. of a, a kink that tail up and it's too much up so oh but look Woo. <laughs> core flute bow bo core flute and pull noodle plane flies Woo, straight out of the box eh need more down trim though I have put too much in that uh, when it does tend to tuck a bit, which is what I expected with the flat surface wing. But look at this, look at this, it flies straight out of the box, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Quite turbulent today, so it's not doing too bad. We've got a bit of wind out. You'll probably hear the wind noise on the mic on the Mobius, hopefully. Wow, look at this go! Yay! Brill! Oh, I love it! Still low fly past. You see, it's a bit wobbly. There's probably a little bit too much dihedral there. It's like having too much P in your PIDs. It uh, does a thing called Dutch rolling if you have too much dihedral. That's what we're getting here, but it's fine otherwise. Oh, I love it! Look at it! Look at it! Oh yeah! I want to go. I don't want to go too fast because I think it would tuck and we wouldn't be able to pull it out. But we'll try some of those things later. Try and go in fast and stuff. But woohoo! Oh no, this is brilliant. I hope I'm getting this in the hat cam because I don't know what the angle on the hat cam's like. So bear with me. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. That was a quick build. It was cheap and it flies. What more could you wish for? Let's do a landing. We'll go around again and do a landing. Don't know how long the battery's going to last. We'll check it when we come down. But, oh man, this is fantastic. There you go. I will be refining this, of course, because... Beautiful! <laughs> Wonderful! It's down, it flies, and it came down in one piece! Didn't break a damn thing, look at that! Whoa! Well, there you go. 
Um, I'd like your comments on this. I'd like your thoughts. What do you think? Um, I've got a whole lot of ideas for other pull noodle core flute planes, and um, I might just knock them together and see how they go. Well, let's summarise. I got to say, I'm, as I said, I'm pretty impressed with the way this flies, and considering it's like, uh, what's that? Well, a whole pull noodle costs four dollars here in New Zealand. See, four dollars for a pull noodle. I've used about a third of that, so that's two dot. No, what's that? It's a dollar set eighty or something worth of um, pull noodle. Uh, the core flute, well if you stole a relative sign that didn't cost you a penny and you can always go and get scraps from the local sign company or whatever and they'll give you a few scraps. So, so the core flute's effectively nothing. A um, couple of old 9 gram servers I had laying around, so old that this one is orange, like the, it's the original Hobby King 9 gram servos. Some bits of wire, bits of plywood, a few zip ties um, and some old, an old mini quad motor I had laying around, a really old ESC, uh, so old it's huge and a ratty old battery. This battery is really crappy but it came down just above storage charge after that flight. It's only 850 milliamps so it didn't suck too much juice really and um, yeah what can I say? Best value model I've ever had. In fact this thing actually flies better than some hundred dollar plug and fly models I've bought. You know ARFs and plug and fly so woo bonus. Now this weekend of course I'll be hammering this. It's a normal flying weekend at the local club so I'll be taking it out hammering it to put it through the crash test. So I'm no doubt it will end up getting crashed um, so, hey, we'll see how it performs in encounters with the ground. So, yay. Righto, it's over to you people now. I know there's probably some people said, oh, we'll never see part two of this build. Well, here it is, look, done and dusted. Done and dusted, very happy with it. So, what would you like to see now? I want I wanted to do an FPV model, obviously, because FPV is really cool. Now, I'm not a fan of FPV models looking through the prop, as you would do if you put a camera on here. So, I might do a pusher designed specifically for FPV and also trying to get a bit, more, a bit more efficiency out of it. So I may even use a cambered wing section which will also help the handling a little bit. This does have a tendency to tuck a bit if you push in, when you get speed on it's quite sensitive on the elevators because the aerofoil as I say it, it has a massive change in lift and centre of pressure over a very small change of angles of attack so it, it makes it a little bit less stable once you get some speed on. So for a really fast model we want to have, or not even really fast, but one that's going to be a bit more predictable in the handling we want to have a cambered wing. So I'm going to look at doing ways to do a cambered wing and obviously I'll probably put ailerons on, or maybe maybe make a flying wing with ailerons with a with foam fuselage on it and from foam nacelles perhaps a twin I don't know the world is our oyster now that you've seen how easy it is to actually design and put together your own model out of scratch build it out of your own head you know you can put a bit of cerebellum there and an ear over here build it out of your own head and see how you get on tell me how you, I'd like to see some videos now if you do have a go at this and you get something flying then send me a link to the video and I'll gladly include it in perhaps a follow-up video I'll do where I'll, I'll link to all the other videos of people that have built planes using these techniques and they've flown and even if they don't fly let's have some crashes eh? let's see the failures they're just as much fun as the successes there you go now I hope you've uh, everyone said they enjoyed the last video so hopefully you enjoyed this one too and if you've got any questions comments stick them in the usual place I'll do my best to answer them in the meantime Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for the local flying schools for finally buggering off when I was trying to wait. And thank you for not raining. Oh, it's a good day. There you go. Bye for now.